So time to do the discharge summary. Now the discharge summary is arguably the most important document because it needs to summarize everything that's happened and pass on the information to the next person in the step of that person's healthcare journey whether that be to the GP, the family care doctor, or maybe it's to a specialist, or maybe it's just for the patient and their family to understand what happened at hospital so they can do the next steps appropriately. And you see it time and time again, a poor discharge summary that doesn't adequately and succinctly summarize everything that's gone on with the patient can lead to miscommunication, and loss of follow-up and essentially just a re-presentation to hospital. So taking the time to really get this thing right is one of the most important things in a patient's hospital journey. I think the first thing to understand is like what's the point of the discharge summary at all? And I guess it's a transition of care. Look at what happened, summarize it in the most concise way possible and then that's it, leave it. Avoid the noise, avoid a lot of information that doesn't really matter. Think about the people who are receiving these documents and think about their workload, their lifestyle, what, what's happening in their life. So a lot of people who receive the document are GPs or family care doctors and they're very overworked, busy and time poor people. And essentially they don't wanna be sifting through all this information to work out what the patient had done maybe it was an operation or you know what happened in hospital recently so just focus on the main points and don't include anything else that's not relevant the first thing that i write in a discharge summary is one sentence that summarizes where the patient was what unit they were under and when they were admitted from what date they came in and what day they left that's it a lot of people have you know a long-winded sentence thanking them for their ongoing care and you know you can include that if you want i used to include that and now i just you know really focus on the pertinent points of information because spending a lot of time on a lot of different stuff that confuses or you know adds noise to the pertinent information just makes it pointless you know it's just more information that people have that they don't need focus on the most important things and then move on so you know it would look like something like this you know, you could say, you could say thank you uh, for your ongoing care of Mr. Johnson. No, let's say Mr. Simpson. Yeah, you can say Bart Simpson was admitted under the general surgery department or general surgery unit at Springfield Hospital on the 1st of 11th, 23, 23. <laughs> and discharged on the 3rd, uh, on the 4th of the 11th, 23. That's it. And then you could say, you know, if Bart underwent a particular operation, then I would just put the operation note. You would do the operation that took place. Um, sometimes I put in the people who did the operation. So, you know, um, surgeons, the indication or operative diagnosis, this could be, you know, appendicitis, that's it. And then you put in their inpatient progress, nil acute complications post-operatively, bowels opened, day one, pain well controlled and discharged from acute pain service, day one, or you, you put in discharge plan, discharge home, oral antibiotics, let's say four days, follow up in clinic, face-to-face -face in four weeks, booked. No heavy lifting for six weeks. So look, the, the main things for this, I mean, if it's a post-op surgical patient who underwent an emergency operation, or maybe it was an elective operation, it doesn't really matter, you want to note the operation that took place who did it and why you did it in the first place. So the operative diagnosis or indication, you wanna know their progress after the procedure took place and then the discharge plan. And I mean, some people put the discharge plan at the bottom, some people put the discharge plan up the top in red writing because arguably that's the most important part of the discharge summary itself. But you know, like I'm not including like a lot of different things that went on. 
And I mean, yeah, the argument is that for other patients that are more complicated, it will need to be a longer, more detailed discharge summary because there's a lot more things that went on and this patient is not as nearly as complicated as some of the other patients that come through hospital. So, I mean, this is a classic sort of surgical discharge summary that only takes about, you know, maximum 10 minutes to do. Um, so you can just go through this. The other thing you can include is like the history of presenting complaint. If this patient came into emergency department, you can mainly talk about like the symptoms that they presented with briefly, what treatment we did when they had their procedure. You can do that if, they're, if you really want to, if it's, if it's relevant. Um, maybe the person went straight to ICU or maybe the person was very unwell and needed, um, yeah, or also maybe something different or interesting happened that you want to include. But for most straightforward cases, all the person reading the discharge summary wants to know is what operation happened and what, what is the follow-up plan and if they were really sick or not sick in hospital. And I think the discharge plan is one of the most important things because, you know, we did some stuff in hospital to this patient, but what's next? You know, maybe they need stitches removed in a few weeks time. Maybe they need to be seen in the clinic or, you know, whatever. Maybe they need to have a follow-up with their GP for a wound review. It, it really depends on what procedure took place, but having a good plan communicated to the patient and to all the other healthcare professionals that are looking after the person, that is, the, I, that is arguably the most important thing that you need to get from the discharge summary. So if it doesn't do that, then you really need to ask yourself, why are you writing the stuff down that you are writing down? Because yeah, you need to have transition of care to a different healthcare professional looking after this person. The other way you can do discharge summaries um, for more complicated patients is essentially, you know, you might put in the history of presenting complaint or you do the inpatient issues. Like the progress note, the inpatient issues go through each thing. So maybe it's the COPD exacerbation, maybe it's the AKI, maybe they also had, I don't know, a DVT, they had chest pain. All these things that went on for this particular patient, you go through and you do their treatment, improvement or non-improvement what changed or what was done and what we are doing now. So, I mean, maybe for this, you can say that we treated them with some antibiotics and then also some steroids and inhalers. Then that really helped. Um, then we've now changed their medication because previously they were on nothing, but now we've discharged them on like long-term inhalers and yeah, now we've got a plan to monitor them in the clinic in a few weeks time or something like that. You know, for this, maybe it resolved and there was nothing to do. We just gave them some fluids and maybe encouraged some oral intake. Um, or it depends on like what the cause of it was, you know, altogether. But for each issue, you essentially just comment on what was done, how it was, you know, diagnosed or recognized and what's happened now. Is it an ongoing thing that we need to monitor or treat or is it resolved and there's no further things to do for it? You know, say for chest pain, maybe the patient had some chest pain three days into the admission. It was sharp. They were investigated for a possible pulmonary embolism with a scan like a CTPA that was negative. The chest pain resolved and there was no further um, incidences of that chest pain. So then we had to do nothing else. Yeah, it's just something to note about what happened to that patient. And it's important because if something came up from it, then we know what happened and what was done and how it was investigated. And when along the course of their hospital stay did all this stuff happen. But essentially that's the main thing for the discharge summary. The other thing that like I used to include when I was first starting out is all the blood tests and, you know, results and imaging. I mean, I would now only include that if it was really, really relevant to the ongoing care of the patient. So, I mean, sometimes I'm on urology at the moment. Say a patient comes in with an obstructed stone 
and then we put a stent in to de-obstruct the stone, we essentially do part one of the procedure because that is the best thing for the patient right now. But say we find out that this patient has private health insurance and needs another procedure to be done to treat the stone, then we refer them on to the private uh, surgeon, but we would then attach the scan and send a imaging report of the scan that was done so that they know where the stone is, how big it is, and essentially what the body looks like, um, how the stone's affecting the kidneys and the tract itself. So that's just one example of when I would include imaging because the imaging is relevant for what went on and what is going on for the next part of that patient's journey for that particular medical condition. But if there was like a normal chest x-ray that didn't really show anything and you know, there was no, it wasn't really relevant to that person's uh, condition as they stayed in hospital, then don't include it. Don't worry about it. You know, you don't need to include everything that you did because as we said before, it just adds noise. Other things that you could possibly include is any histopathology results if it came back quick enough or any urine or blood infections, something like that. Maybe this person had a positive blood culture, then, you know, arguably you could just write it in the issues and how you treated it. But if you really wanted to and you felt like it was important and relevant for the next person, you could include it in their results section. But I don't really do that as often. If it's not relevant, I'll just comment on the pertinent points. But yeah, those are the main things that I include in the discharge summary. It is a really, really important document and it can be overcomplicated, but this hopefully simplifies it in a, in a really easy template to do. I mean, just to reiterate, you might put in the thank you message, but I essentially put in the patient's name, when they were admitted, when they were discharged, what unit they were admitted under and what hospital they were in. That's the main thing that you want to know. You know, then you want to know if they had any procedures done, what their issues were when they came into hospital and how they presented to hospital in the first place, what the issues were and how you treated them or overcame them. And then their progress after a procedure, if they had a procedure or an operation. And then of course, the money is always in the discharge summary. What's happening next? Are they going on to a certain specialist or are they going just back to their family doctor to be seen in a few weeks for a general checkup? Do they need to be given blood tests or do they need to check up on a particular thing uh, in, the, in the community in a few weeks time? Do they need to check or change their medications? These things are super important for the next person looking after them. And if you can always remember that thing about discharge summaries is that this is a transition of care document. It needs to summarize everything that went on without all the noise and then you know then you pass that information on to the next person to sort them out for their next for the next step of their medical journey so yeah that's all that discharge summary is so yeah those three documents are some of the most important common but easy to mess up documents so make sure you master them as a junior doctor and the more you do the better you get at them and if you can generate your own template, you can use mine. I'll have these templates up as Notion templates available for you to download and use. So, you know, they're the main things that I think about when I'm writing them. You don't need to overcomplicate it. You can see from this that my templates are super, super simple, easy to apply, and they don't, you know, overcomplicate things, which I think is a is one way you can fall down when you do these documents and then you just spend way too long doing them and not enough time doing the jobs that you need to do from the documents itself. So yeah, hopefully this helps. Bye.